Hey there guys and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 13. In the last episode after beating Barthandalus at the end of the Rust Eating Bridge in Orba, <clears throat> we had the opportunity to travel to Cocoon for the final battle. But before we did that, I suggested that we prepare before going there by backtracking um, on Grand Pulse. Now the first thing I wanted to point out is after you beat Barthandalus, your Crystarium will expand to stage 9. So you can work on developing your characters to get them even stronger. So last episode we spent all million CP that we had saved up for each character. And we almost had enough to max out all roles. So as you can see the Commando role, Ravenger role is completely maxed out for lightning and she's really close to maxing out her medic role and it's the same for all characters two of their primary roles are maxed out and we're just three or four crystals away from maxing out their final primary role now something that I really wanted to point out and this is really important is that if you look at Fang's synergist role her secondary role and you head up her synergist role a little bit you'll see that she learns um Protectra, which significantly raises tar target's physical resistance for a short time. So pretty much this is like the next stage up from Protect. It's really useful. Also further up she can learn Shellra, which significantly raises target's magic resistance for a short period of time, which is like the next stage up of Shell. And then finally, even higher, she can learn Haste which accelerate targets ATV gauge, re, ATV gauge recharge rate. Now this is very important because right now the only two people that um, can learn haste are Saz, which we learned haste with him a long time ago. But Hope actually learned haste under his synergist role. So on the last episode, whenever we were progressing um, and leveling up our characters, he actually... He, Hope actually learned haste on his stage 9 Crystarium under his synergist role. So right now, Saz and Hope are the only ones that can learn haste. Now as soon as you do get haste, um, you can take off the sprint shoes from all your battle characters. Um, so sprint shoes cast haste at the start of battle. So this will work for now <clears throat> because we don't have haste with any of our main battle teams, which is Lightning, Vanille, and Fang. But I just wanted to point that out, that Fang can learn haste under her synergist role. So what we're going to be doing on Grand Pulse before we head to Cocoon. Is first we're going to finish maxing out our character's primary roles. And we need about 100,000 CP. And all of our character's primary roles will be maxed out. They're very close. Um, some people only need like 30,000 CP while others need a hundred thousand and then um, all primary roles will be complete so that's what um, we were able to max out our crystarium so fast because uh, for the last like 30 episodes I advise you guys to continuously save your CP and do not spend it and that's why because now that our crystarium has expanded to stage 9 we already had 999,999 CP saved up with everybody so um yeah we spent the million cp and we pretty much came very very close to maxing out all characters primary roles like i said we're just two or three crystals away with uh our characters and that's for one role the other two roles are completely maxed out with all characters so after we um get the 100,000 CP and max out all of our characters primary roles we're going to work on their secondary roles like I said probably the first thing you should take care of after you max out everyone's um, primary roles on their crystarium is to advance Fang far enough under her synergist role so that she learns haste that way um, during really tough battles you can have um, Fang as a synergist and she can put haste on everybody um, so that's really going to help you guys out. So after you max out everyone's primary roles, make sure you um, work on Fang's secondary role as a synergist so that she can learn Protectora, Shellra, and Haste. So after we do that, we're going to um, start working on Sea Stone missions 29 through 34. 
because so far we've completed all the sea stone missions um, in the order that we're supposed to. So we've completed sea stone missions 1 through 28. And before we head over to Cocoon, we're going to complete sea stone missions 29 through 34. Now you may be asking why stop at 34 because there's a total of 64 sea stone missions. Well, it's mainly because sea stone missions 34 or 35 and up are very hard <clears throat> and while we could probably tackle them with a fully maxed out stage 9 crystarium it's really not worth the struggle because once we um, complete the final battle on cocoon the crystarium will expand to its final stage stage 10 and once it expands to stage 10 we can max that out so that we're strong enough to take out all of the sea stone missions and then we will return to Cocoon for the final time to complete Sea Stone missions 35 through 64. Alright, so for now, we're going to stay on Cocoon just long enough so that we can max out all characters' primary roles and then get a good head start on their secondary roles, particularly so that Fang can learn haste. And then once we've GP grinding, we're going to go ahead and complete Sea Stone missions 29 through 34. Once we're finished with that, we're going to go ahead and continue to Cocoon, fight the final battle so that our Crystarium expands to Stage 10. And then we're going to return to Cocoon, max out everyone's Crystarium at Stage 10, do a whole crap load of grinding for Gil so that we can upgrade all of our characters' weapons to their ultimate weapons and Omega weapons. And then we're going to get the best accessories in the game and fully upgrade them. And then once we're done with that, we're going to finally complete Sea Stone missions 35 through 64. Alright, so it's easier said than done. Um, we still have a long ways to go, but we are nearing the end of the game. Now the post game, um, for those of you who don't know, post game is what is considered after you beat the game. Everything you do after you beat the final boss of the game is considered post game. So that's pretty much like the optional stuff after the game's over, the main story's over. Alright, so the post game for this game, Final Fantasy 13, is really long. There's lots of stuff we're going to be doing and we're going to be spending a lot of time doing it. So for now, let's go ahead and work on getting our CP up, max out all characters' primary roles, and then get Fang far enough along her synergist role so that she learns haste. And also we're going to be comp um, working on... Lightning and Vanille synergist roll so that we can have three synergists at once in battle. And if you're wondering why we need three synergists, it's because at the start of battle, all characters will be fully buffed within 30 seconds. So yeah, we're going to make sure that we can get that done before leaving to Cocoon. And finally, Sea Stone missions 29 through 34. Alright, so let's get starting. Let's get started. We're at Orba, right at the save point where we fought Barthandalus. So let's go ahead and exit out of here. Go ahead and make sure you fight all enemies in the path. That way you can collect experience and get a good head start. And where we're going to be heading to is Tajin's Tower. At the very top of the tower, um, there's, a, there's a certain enemy group that we can fight for 8,000 CP. And then there's actually an even better enemy group that we can fight um, inside of Tajin's Tower. So we'll be able to get a lot of CP rather quickly. Um, so I'll show you guys exactly where that is. For now, let's go ahead and make our way to Tajin's Tower. Make sure you fight all enemies in the path. That's how it's done. Alright, so you can see that we're a lot stronger now. Um, before we head on, I'm going to quickly show you my equipment. 
For lightning, we have the Inkindler fully upgraded, an Adamant Bangle fully upgraded, which increases maximum HP by 1500, an Aurora Scarf fully upgraded, and Sprint Shoes. For Vanille, we have a Marlboro Wand fully upgraded, Survival Cava Survivalist Catalog, Speed Sash, and Sprint Shoes. And finally, for Fang, we have a Calamity Spear fully upgraded, two Speed Sashes, and Sprint Shoes. So if you have any questions about how to get these accessories, you can check back on the previous episode, episodes. I covered them in detail. And if you're wondering why we're using the Speed Sash and Survivalist Catalog and the two Speed Sashes for Fang, it's because of the random instant chain passive ability, which you can see on the bottom right. Now what this means is we have a low percentage to instantly stagger any enemy. No matter if we just started the battle or what, we will instantly stagger an enemy and it's a small percentage but having them on both characters will increase the chances of instant staggers and the reason why instead of Vanille doesn't have speed sash and she has a survivalist catalog is because this is one of the rare exceptions where the survivalist catalog and the speed sash work together just like two speed sashes so if you only have one speed sash on each character you won't get the random instant chain ability you need to have at least two of them together or a survivalist catalog with a speed sash together and a survivalist catalog will increase the odds of obtaining shrouds after battle so this way we have a higher chance of getting Agizol, Agizols and Fortizols so that we can buff our characters up before those hard battles yeah so if you have any questions on how to get any accessories the adamant bangle all that good stuff um, just look back on the previous episodes I explain it in detail I'm going to quickly show you guys the stats now that we have mostly all of our characters primary roles maxed out. For lightning we have 9200 HP, 1335 strength, 1, or 1300 magic, 1300 magic. <clears throat> For vanille we have 6905 HP, 1194 strength and a magic of 1625. For Fang, we have an HP of 7,695, Strength of 1,812, and Magic of 1,282. For Saz, we have an HP of 8,350, a Strength of 692, and a Magic of 645. For Snow, we have HP of 9,430, Strength of 1,174, and Magic of 878. Finally, for Hope, we have an HP of 6,020, a Strength of 831, and a Magic of 1,549. So if you're wondering why the stats on Lightning, Vanille, and Fang are higher, it's because we have the weapons fully upgraded. So that adds about four or 500 um, more Strength and Magic. I was just getting started.
So just pretty much make your way out of Orba. Oh 
we're gonna go ahead and take the uh, the um, scenic route all the way to uh, Tajin's Tower. I wouldn't worry about fighting any of these guys here because they're just not worth the amount of CP. Go ahead and board the elevator at the dead end, and that'll take you back up top of Tajin's Tower. Alright, so once you're back up top, Tajin's Tower, so the uh, enemy group you're going to want to be looking for is the five pulse work gladiators. So they kind of look like the uh, pulse work soldiers that we've been fighting throughout the whole game, except these guys are gold, and there's five of them. There's a group on the other side of the tower, so let's quickly take these guys out first. So after clearing them out, so here's the enemies you're looking for over here. Now this is not the spot we're going to grind at. This is just the enemies that we're going to be fighting at a different spot. So you can go ahead and fight these guys so you can get 8,000 CP. These guys in groups of 5 will drop a total of 8,000 CP after each battle. So after clearing them out, as you can see, you get 8,000 Christian Gem points. So this is the best battle that I've found so far that'll uh, really get you uh, a good amount of CP that doesn't take too long or it's too difficult to keep um, fighting over and over and over. So now we're going to talk about the actual CP grinding spot. So them are the enemies you're going to be fighting. Now where's a good spot to get them to respawn quickly? So go ahead and jump on the central elevator 
which is the purple elevator. Now, if you didn't get this elevator um, unlocked back when we were at Tajin's Tower the first time, um, you're going to have to do a special, well, it's like a little side quest. All you got to do is examine a couple statues, and it'll get the elevator unlocked so that can reach the top of the tower. If you want to know in detail how to unlock this elevator, you can check back a couple episodes. And at the end of the Tajin's Tower walkthrough in this Let's Play series, I'll explain in detail how to unlock the central elevator. So once you have it unlocked, go ahead and jump on it and choose to ride it down to the sixth tier. Now the actual CP grinding uh, spot that we're going to be farming for CP at is just like, it's the same exact CP spot I mentioned earlier. So if you've been following this walkthrough, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because we did a little bit of CP grinding here earlier. The first time we were at Tajin's Tower. Alright, so go ahead and get off the elevator um, behind you. Take the path behind you. <clears throat> and then go ahead and enter the last door on the right. Just getting started. Alright, and here it is. This is the room. You're going to want to be on Tajin's Tower on the 6th tier. Once you get off the central elevator, exit behind you. And then you're going to enter the last door on the right. So here you'll find a set of stairs. Go ahead and descend down the stairs and you'll see a save point. So if you head all the way to the bottom of the steps, you'll find a battle with five pulse work gladiators. So these, this is where we're going to do the CP farming. So let's go ahead and take these guys out. Alright, so after clearing them out, eh, you'll get about 8,000 CP after each battle, 8,000 CP. So in order to get them res to respawn, you can head up the stairs behind you and you can either do one of two things. You can head up the steps behind you and save your game at the save point, and then press start and select to quit to the main menu, and then reload your game, and once it's reloading, the enemies below you will have respawned. But that takes a little bit longer than the other option. The other option is once you've killed the enemies down below, you run up the stairs. And at the top, you'll see a vampire enemy by himself. Go ahead and run over to him and uh, take him out. It's really quick if you can get a preemptive strike.
Alright, so after you take out the vampire upstairs, if you head back down the stairs, the all the enemies downstairs should be respawned. And yes, they are. So now, in a very rare occasion, the enemies down below won't respawn. And that usually happens if the if when you head upstairs, the vampire enemy is right close to the steps. So say you head upstairs, and the vampire enemy is like right here around the corner, like right here. Then usually, the en after you defeat them, the enemies won't respawn because you didn't go far enough away. So usually when you come up the steps, the vampire will be over against the far wall. And then running over there gives you far enough distance so that the enemies downstairs will respawn. Another reason they won't spawn in a rare occasion is if you get a preemptive strike and you take out the vampire enemy too quickly, then sometimes the enemies downstairs won't respawn because you killed the enemy up top too fast and it didn't give them enough time to respawn. So if any of these two things happens, all you have to do is run out the um, doorway to the inner ring of Cajun's Tower and then run over to the elevator and then come straight back. And by the time you come straight back, all the enemies will have definitely respawned and you can take them out again. Now, doing this strategy is approximately 30 to 45 seconds faster than saving your game and then reloading your game so that all the enemies have respawned. <clears throat> so it's 30 seconds faster if you just kill the enemies downstairs, run upstairs and kill the enemy upstairs, then run backstairs. It's 30 seconds 30 seconds faster than killing or than killing the enemies downstairs and then saving your game to reload it. And also by killing the enemy upstairs, not only is it 30 seconds faster, it, you also get an extra 2,300 experience, bringing the total experience to 10,000 experience you get every group of enemies you kill, because killing the enemies downstairs you get 8,000 experience and then killing the enemy upstairs you get 2,000 so if you add that together that's 10,000 CP and it usually takes two minutes to take out the enemies downstairs and then run upstairs and take out the enemy upstairs and now that we're at a higher um, Crystarium level and we're a lot more stronger it should only take about a minute and a half so pretty much every minute and a half you're getting 10,000 CP points so this is the fastest place that I know of to get CP. And the battles are a whole lot faster if you can preemptive strike them. If you can manage to preemptive strike both enemies, it should only take you about a minute to kill the enemies downstairs and then run upstairs and kill the enemy upstairs. So if you can get lucky with the preemptive strikes, you can get 10,000 CP every minute. So all we're going to be doing is we're going to be CP grinding and I would suggest to get about 400,000 CP. That way we can max out all of our character's primary roles as long as you're close to maxing out your character's current primary roles. Now if you haven't done any CP grinding, then I would suggest getting a million CP or the CP cap which is 999,999. ,999. That way you can spend it all and you should be very close to maxing out your character's primary roles. And then you can get an extra 400,000 CP after saving up a million and then spending it save up about another 400,000 that way you can uh, finish off all your characters primary roles and max them out and then start working on your secondary roles so if you want my recommendation for which roles you should upgrade as your character secondary roles if you're using the same party as me lightning vanille and fang I would suggest to start learning synergist role with all three characters that way we can um, set up the synergist 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 paradigm and have all characters fully buffed at the start of each battle within 30 seconds. <clears throat> so again, we're going to be Crystarium grinding now. For those of you that have been following this walkthrough from the beginning, you should already know this bot because we were doing this earlier when we first came to Tajin's Tower, so there's nothing new. We're just completing the same thing we did earlier now that our Crystarium has expanded. And we're going to be maxing out our Crystarium levels again. 
and then advance in lightning, vanilla, and fang far enough down the center, just roll so that they learn all the abilities. And once we're done with this, we're going to continue on um, taking out some sea stone missions. All right, so go ahead and grind out for CP and max out your character's primary roles. And I'll see you guys next time on the next episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 13.